Oh, I got a fun one today. I got a lot of stuff done over the last week or so, and I'm gonna show it to you guys. Electrical, uh, suspension, wiring, welding, mechanical. Look, I, I even still got a mess of stuff in here. That's how busy I've been. Look underneath. More work done. Anyway, it was productive. It was fun. Ah, I'm enjoying this. Can't wait to ride it, but I'm enjoying it. So give me a like, give me a thumbs up, hit that link down below and give me a subscribe. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what I should do differently. And uh, have a Merry Christmas. Merry's Garage. Okay, so the axle is gonna go back under right now to <clears throat> just give me an idea of where my links need to be um, and what articulation I have. I can, I can check all the clearances. So let me just show you how the, um, all the link arms. I've got Johnny joints in the front. That's gonna be where it mounts the links. And down here, I've got these rebuildables. And I'll, I'll show you how these guys work because they're actually pretty cool. So this guy, this is basically the system. <clears throat> And obviously you've got your, your lock washer and your back washer, but uh, totally rebuildable, really cool. Now, like an idiot, I had, um, I had some of these in when I was welding up the cans. So I was welding up these cans and kept this in And unfortunately, some of them melted. But uh, that's the nice part. I can, I can easily replace that. So uh, right now, I'm going to fit each one to a different link and see if they all fit well. And uh, if they don't, grind them down a little bit with a flap disc just to get them to fit flush. To fit flush. I have the wiring harness connected up to my 12 volt little power source, uh, the benchtop power I made for the electrolysis tank. And the harness is working, so I'm going to give you guys a quick blast through. Um, it's very, very rough, but I've just got, you know, I can energize each one of the circuits to determine if it's working, and it is. So let me show you. Okay, coming down to here, these are, let's just start from the beginning. Okay, so if I go to the blue, this should trigger my reverse lights. Awesome. One, two. Okay, that's the reverse lights. Black, that's gonna be, that is my running, oh, what color is this? Oh, that's brown, okay. This brown is my running lights. There we go. This is cool. Needless to say, I am super stoked to uh, finally put some energy through that thing and have it work properly. Um, I've been uh, continuity testing and things like that, but I haven't really um, made sure it works. So I had to do a little bit of troubleshooting before I brought you guys in. And uh, there was some connections that were a little wonky that I had to fix. But apart from that, it should be able to just clip right in, which is what I wanted. Good stuff, good stuff.
That's 10 inches of travel. That's 10 inches of legit travel. That's a tube. So I'm gonna run nine inches of up travel. Maybe with five inches of down. Uh, maybe not. Sounds kind of a little too deserty. Who knows? We'll see. Open here. Let's zero everything out. 15 degrees. Cut the axle back underneath. That is going well. Uh, all the link lengths are in, bolted in. I've got my pinion angle set. I've got ride height set. It's coming together. Let me show you guys where it's at. I'm gonna be doing some adjustments here to make sure that it's exactly where I want it in terms of ride height and uh, pinion angle. But as you can see, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna get a full measurement on the uh, wheelbase and everything today and start mocking up uh, shock placement, uh, bump straps, um, limit straps, and bump stops. Let's go do it. Things are starting to line up here. Uh, links in full articulation. I get a little bit of conflict right here. Let me show you. And um, This was kind of be expected. As this link arm moves up, it's going to kiss this guy right here at, uh, that's going to be full bump, full, full bump. Full bump is when these guys hit up here. But as you can see, where's my tape measure? That's roughly 10 inches of up travel, which is what I'm gonna probably limit it at. So 10 inches of up travel or nine inches. Bump stops are gonna be going right here. That's where they're impacting. Um, that's where they're impacting on articulation. They're a little, about an inch over on um, on full bump. So let me get one of my one of my bump cans. And these guys are gonna go right here. So that guy's going right here. And now the challenge is gonna be, can I get my shock to clear all this too? So let me put the camera down for a sec. More good news. Well, it's just showing they don't have it. Oh, hi, Lily. Can you say hi to Merrick's Garage fans? Hi. Ah, oh, that's awesome. Okay, coming in here, this is roughly, where a 40 inch tire is gonna be at full stuff. Yeah. These trucks can swallow up so much tire. Yeah, that's badass. Getting old, my back is always hurting me. Uh, it's time, we're gonna cut the floor. Uh, it has to be done to get the shocks where I really want them, where they need to be, where they should be, where no compromises, they're going to go. Um, yeah, let's cut the floor. What could go wrong? Okay, it's go time. I'm gonna do a little bit of measuring uh, but I've already done a bunch of it and I'm pretty confident I know where they're gonna go, but it's still nerve-wracking. I don't know why. I mean this thing's so Cut up already, but there's just something about cutting into the floor, but then again I've already done it, so I don't even know what I'm sweating Let's 
Francisco. First cut is the deepest, right? That's what they say. Oh, buddy. Um, this came out a lot better than I thought. So let me show you where it is and what I think I'm gonna be doing. I cut two holes. What I like about this design in particular is it spreads the load across two different areas. So I've got this whole piece of frame underneath that this is tied to that has given me the support and stability I need. So what I did is I made two cuts and I was able to turn the tube. So let me show you underneath what it looks like. You can see where it's coming out. The plan now is gonna be simply to get a little platform kicking out of here that this will tie into. So that's gonna be like some square tube. Uh, yeah, I'll probably use square tube. I may just, maybe I'll notch it and just go in with a piece of tubing and weld that. I, I don't know, I don't know. But uh, yeah, so that's, these will get cut, but what this is nice is this leaves room here for my bump stop. And the shock will be coming back off of here going up to about here. It's gonna be able to run at a nice angle. This is essentially only going to narrow my trunk by that much space, which is insignificant. And then I could even build a platform on here that could hold stuff and have room underneath. Oh, I'm getting all kinds of ideas now. But what I wanted to show you is this is gonna be able to tie in to the roll cage really nicely, uh, which is just one more reason to not have any body mounts, but just weld it directly to the roll cage, roll cage to the frame. To-do list has been growing. Um, I need to spend some more time getting detailed on it, but here I'll hit you with what I got so far. Oh, to do. I gotta pull the driver's side frame forward half an inch. The wheelbase is off by a quarter inch. The links aren't matching up perfectly. Uh, but that quarter inch isn't bad, but when I measured the distance between the links uh, on the passenger and the driver's side, they're off by half an inch. So I need to fix that. Once that is done, I'm gonna drill and bolt the frame. Uh, I'll bolt it together just to hold it in place, and then I need to start researching exactly how I'm going to uh, strap it together, weld it together, fish plate it together, uh, just join the two sections together in a freaking gnarly link box. Uh, I gotta check the frame cross member, that uh, um, inch and a half uh, tie rod bar that I repurposed as my cross member is a little too, too high, it's hitting on the drive shaft, so I've gotta fix that. Um, put the axle back together. I've gotta to paint the hubs and wheel assembly, I've gotta rebuild the brakes, and I've gotta run new brake line, uh, plumb the differential, all that kind of stuff, and get the differential back in with the wheels on so I can start really doing articulation tests and making sure that there's not any uh, clearance issues with the tires on and the axle and the place that I think it's gonna be. Uh, I need to figure out where my bump stops are gonna go and get the cans on the frame. I'm pretty close on that. Um, everything on the axle, torque to spec, tamper paint, uh, measure the, the shock trajectory. I need to measure how much arc swing I'm gonna get in the bottom of the shock, which is gonna determine how big of a hole I need to drill in my floor to have the shock run up and not get any interference during articulation. Um, I need a sway bar, I need to get the sway bar in. Um, and that's what I have. So, oh, yeah, then I've got all the fueling to deal with. Uh, that shouldn't be that bad. I gotta build a mount for the gas tank to get that back in. Um, yeah, still a lot of stuff to do, but nothing, no massive, massive thing that I can think of. I'm sure you guys will point some stuff down below for me though, but that's where it stands right now. I got work to do. Progress is progress. And, uh, 
been having a lot of it this week. So you guys have seen that I got the shock tower in. Like I mentioned, that went in a lot better than I had hoped. Well, I hoped it would go in this well, but I didn't expect it to. But it's also not all the way in yet, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. The other thing that I've been able to get done, or mostly done, is my wiring harness. And I am stoked on how this has come out. Here's my tail light in. So I've got my brake, reverse, everything. And then it terminates down to here. And in this plug, I'll have my, my ground, my brake, my reverse, all that stuff. And they just continue to plug into more of these. And then I've got these guys that make up the wiring run. So this is, this is what the passenger tail light goes into. And as it comes up here, it splits out to give me wires for a uh, trailer. Okay, you guys, I got one more thing I want to show you tonight. And that is, and I, I know I've been talking about it a lot, but it's this wiring harness. I really kind of have done myself here, I might say. You notice everything is soldered here? Oh massively overdone more than likely the fact that it's all hooked up and seems to be working perfectly is making me pretty excited if i energize these my lights should come on i have some leds in the license plate for license plate lights and then i've got uh the leds over here um that hopefully you guys have seen the video on that I'll put a I'll put a link down below. And then there's uh, the other lights. The the bus bar that breaks out over there. Can you guys see that? That is gonna be my 12 volt uh, hot. So what's gonna be cool about that is I can run a bunch of accessories off that power in the rear. This is my little power box that I built for projects just like this. This is a little $12 board from Amazon that gives you uh, 12 volts, uh, 5 volts, a bunch of different voltages that you can run. This is a $20 power supply from an old computer. You plug them into each other. Wall power. See, right? Right up there. And then I've got 12 volt coming out. So I've got 12 volt hooked up over here. Here's the ground that we're working with. And this is the trailer harness that comes up off of this light. So there is brake lights. Oh. There is reverse lights. There is running lights tail lights so that's going to illuminate brake lights and the lights in the license plate now if i hit the brakes that's what i get that's that's some legit light <laughs> 